Hey, what's going on, guys? It's me, Mike, and today's tutorial is going to be on 2010s, um, well, the upcoming 2010 year, and um, I believe that you know the 2010 year, I mean 2011 year, excuse me, is going to be like a, is going to be a big remembrance on uh, the 9/11 tragedy. So I just want to do a quick video on um, the 2010, I mean 2011. Um, uh, all right. Basically, I'm gonna create a 2011 wallpaper that resembles the 9/11. Uh, the so as you can see, in 2011, it's the 11 kind of represents the twin towers in a way. So um, I wanted to do something like that, and it came out pretty cool. Out with these nice cool bands going around it, um, like you know, securing that you know 2011 is gonna be like a uh, a, a good gathering for people to share their memories and things like that around this time of year and um, I put my rem remembrance around it I me mean, at the bottom so you know kind of um, you know to you know remember and uh, like a foreshadow of the the shade in the background so I'm gonna show you guys how to make this um, all the project files is included on my website at cmykarts.com um, just click on the link at the bottom of this video you should see it will bring you directly to my website where you can download the project files and follow along so I'm gonna go to file new uh, the document size I'm working with is 1440 by 900 alright so go into layers double click that background and unlock it and we're gonna double click on it again to give it a gradient and we're gonna select our gradient and we're gonna select that silver light gradient that's in the project files I kind of named it because it's you know like this gray tone thing something like that so it looked pretty cool so next we're gonna give it an inner shadow and for the inner shadow we're gonna decrease the distance to zero and put the size to about 50 I mean excuse me 150 like that so it's like you know it's bringing in the shadow so it's gonna focus more on what we're about to work on and that should be it for the um, background I just press ok Next, what we're gonna do is lock that background so we doesn't we don't interfere with it. Next, we're gonna go to File Place and we're gonna go browse to the, uh, the project file and retrieve that uh, image that we've um, got in our project file. It should say 2011, right? Press OK, and then you should get this big 3D text I made in another a separate program. And I didn't want to waste time creating this and showing you how I created it. I just wanted to create it, have it ready for you guys, so you guys can actually use this image um, for your tutorial. I mean, for your backgrounds. All right, so we're gonna resize this just a little bit, and uh, something like that. And you can bring out your guides to kind of guide you to where you know you think it should look, where it should be. And I'm just gonna size it just a little more, and press enter. Alright, so I'm going to select my move tool and I'm just going to nudge it up a little bit so it fits right in between this gap right here. And I'm going to disable my guides for right now and I'm going to select my magic wand tool. Now, before I do anything, I want to go Control Shift N to create a new layer and we're going to call this, uh, I'm going to call this, uh, white text or white text face or something like that only because what we're going to do now is select this gray excuse me oops deselect control D we're going to make sure we select that 2011 back um, text layer we put in and rasterize it first next what we're going to do is select that magic wand and have the tolerance to about 19 that's what I have mine on and select that gray that gray is going to be all highlighted and what we're going to do now is select that um, new layer we just created and select the paint bucket tool and it does it could be any color but I chose to be white and we're gonna select that uh, that layer and we're gonna paint in that white so now that we have it like that control D to deselect and what we're gonna do now is gonna go into that layer we're gonna double click on it so we can edit it and we're gonna go select inner shadow and decrease the distance to zero and put the size to about let's say 15 like that so I'm gonna zoom in for you guys so we can actually see the text behind us and as you can see 
um, with the inner shadow, it gives it that much of a, you know, a, a better feel to it. You can leave it just white if you want, and you can add your own uh, pattern to it or something like that. So you just, you know, do that same step all over. Use the magic wand to and select whatever text you want, whatever um, the two, the zero, or the the eleven, and you can give it a pattern if you want, like that. So if you want, you can put a pattern inside of it. Uh, like that, it could be 2011, like that, you know, just giving cool patterns like that, but that's on you, but um, like I said, I'm going to give it an inner shadow, leave the distance, I mean the size to about 15, and press, okay, um, oops, one thing I did forget to mention, you have to give it a stroke, um, the stroke kind of outlines it a little bit, so don't worry about that, and put the um, position inside, and select the size and put it to 2 and the opacity will be at 50 you know so you give it like a light outline so you know kind of makes it stand out a little bit more and press ok alright so the next step is going to be a little bit tricky alright so we have our text now we're going to lock it so we don't interrupt our layers so we're going to lock those two layers and next what we're going to do is select our pen tool um, so next what we're going to do is click outside of the, uh, the document and we're going to select somewhere in the middle like that and you're going to see a straight line and what we're going to do is just bend it just a little bit so bend it just like that and we're going to come outside and just bend it again like that so something like that, it doesn't have to be perfect and uh, what we're going to do is create a new layer like I showed you, Control shift n and we're going to right click you want to make sure first of all go into your brush um, tool and make sure you have a brush that's set to 9 pixels at least and uh, the hardness is at 100 now go back in your pen tool and what we're going to do is right click on that line we just made go to stroke path and we're going to select brush and simulate pressure and now we have a cool line. We're gonna get ahead to delete that path now. We don't need that. And uh, what we're gonna do is make sure that our path is in front of everything in our layer panel. All right, so we're gonna edit this. So double click on it. Um, you can find this gradient as as well in your um, project file. This this yellow gradient. Um, but you can just choose a yellow uh, a yellow color for this if you want. If it's not in the gradient of um, the project files, then you can just put um, a yellow coloring and it should be fine. Now next we're going to go in the shadow and we're going to decrease the distance to zero and uh, leave it just like that. The um, size at five and press OK. Alright, so now that we have our line, we're going to put the line uh, below like that. And what we're going to do now is press Ctrl J on our keyboard to make a duplicate of that line. And we're going to go to edit, transform, and then flip horizontal. Now that we have another line, we're going to kind of size it over just a little bit. Just nudge it over. And um, um, you can, the lines look okay, but you can always edit this if you want. I'm just doing this for an example. Um, so like that. Alright, next what we're going to do is go into our layers panel select those two lines we made and we're going to um, control click so we can select um, both of them we're going to make a copy drag it down and make a copy and then press control E on your keyboard to merge those two layers now we're going to uh, disable the two original nine layers so we only have the one we made so I'm going to put merged lines alright so we have our merged lines and what we're going to do now is uh, Kind of edit it so that way it looks like it's wrapping around the uh, 2011. All right, so select your eraser tool. Make sure it's about nine pixels, and we're gonna. Uh, it looks like this line is in front and this one is in back. So I'm gonna go, go ahead and zoom in for you guys, and um, just gonna have to take a steady hand at doing this. But what you need to do is erase the line so that way you don't see the lines too much on the text at all so like that and this one kind of sticks out a little bit so 
um, you know, this is gonna take some time, but uh, I want you guys to do this as steady as possible so you can get the best possible outcome. And I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom in and get this done for you guys quickly. I made a little mistake there, but it's okay. You kinda get the idea of what I'm doing. And um, so here's the, I'm um, gonna work on the next line. So this one, like I said, is overlapping the first line, so um, I'm going to put this one in. Uh, let's see. This one's going to come under like that. This is when like critical thinking comes into graphic design. Okay, and uh, this one is going to go underneath as well. Again, I kind of messed up on that first part right there, but it's alright. Just a video, not the final product. And uh, we're done. So I'm just going to zoom out for you guys. You kind of see the results. Now we're going to, um, I included the text for this um, tutorial, so you guys can check that out in the project file. Um, the size I used is about 36. And we're going to put remembrance. Excuse me, remembrance. Press OK or oh, Enter. And now we're going to give it a cool layer style. Alright, so double click on that remembrance layer. We're going to give it a drop shadow, an inner shadow. Go into the inner shadow and decrease the distance. Um, by now, you guys should get a, a hang of doing this. Um, we're going to select that silver light uh, gradient that we have in our project file and select the stroke. We're going to decrease the stroke to about 1 like that and press ok and we're gonna actually lock that layer now because we have it in the correct position where we don't need to move it anymore and you're done so uh, this is your 2000 oh wait we're not done <laughs> alright so next thing you're gonna wanna do is select your uh, your shape tool and we're gonna draw a square like a square the size about that one maybe a little smaller than a one like that and press Control J, J on our keyboard to make a duplicate. Um, move it over a little bit, and we're gonna place those two layers behind uh, the 2011 text. So basically everything but the background. All right, so we're gonna um, double click. I'm gonna go change that hex value to um, a, a blue. So, oops. There we go like a nice dark color blue and uh, what I have here is 00BDB2 so you can enter that in your hex value down here and press OK and uh, apply that same color I'm gonna ha go ahead and hurry this video up so we can finish this alright next we're gonna um, select both of them and control E to merge them and I go to filter Blur, Guardian Blur, and set the radius to 20, and press OK. And next, what we're going to do is select our Smudge tool right underneath the Paint Bucket tool. Select that. We're going to hold Shift and just bring it up like that. I'm going to make sure your uh, your brush is at least 20 or 30. I have 25 right now, like that. Hold Shift, bring it up. Oops. Like that. Next, what we're going to do is select our brush and select like a light color red and just, oops, just poke a dot right there on each of them. Select our smudge tool again and bring it up. And there you have it, you guys. This is the 2011 Remembrance Tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. And please check out my website at cmykrs.com to get the project files for this video. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.